Hello, everyone. How are you all doing today? Can you all hear me? Are we good? Are you all there? All right, so we are going to go ahead and get started here. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you're all having a good afternoon so far. We are going to be talking about all things Yellowstone, Yosemite, and as you see, beyond. So we're going to be getting into some city destinations and just a couple more trips um, that are a little different than our national, typical national parks trips. Um, but let's go ahead and get started. So that's me right there. My name is Haley. So I will be walking you through this presentation today. Um, that is a photo of me, in case you're wondering, of me in Vancouver. I was there last month and that's in Stanley Park. And Vancouver is actually one of the places that you can go with Amtrak vacations. Um, and as you can see up there on the screen, one person will be winning a $100 Amtrak vacations gift card at the end of the presentation today. So. It's incentive for you guys to stay tuned, but you can sit back and get cozy and we're gonna go through these trips and hopefully get you guys excited to be traveling. All right? All right. So as you can see um, on the right hand side of your screen, uh, there's like a little drop down box. There is a handout in there for you guys to download um, and you can do so at the end of the presentation if you would like. Um, and it just has some of the national park trips we're talking about in this presentation. Um, and it also has just a couple others that we offer. Also, there is a chat box right there, and I see you guys let me know that you could hear me, which is wonderful. Um, but if you want to go ahead and write in any questions that you have throughout the presentation, I'm going to try my best at the very end. We're going to save some time and go over those questions that you had. And I'll try to get through all of them, but if there's a lot, I'll just try and get through as many as I can. So like I said, just put in those questions that you have, and we'll make time at the end to answer them. All righty. So while we are starting off here, the first question, why Amtrak vacations? So as you can see on the left-hand side there, it says bucket list experience. Now I have to say, the national parks in the United States, they are very unique. And I would say, especially traveling by train, is not something uh, here on the West Coast that I get to do every day. Um, and traveling to these destinations is a very unique experience. You get to go through vast landscapes and all kinds of different mountains and deserts and all kinds of fun things. So it's not something that everyone does every day. Same with sleeping on the train. So it's definitely an experience that one could distinguish as a bucket list. There's also room to roam. So if you're like me and you like to get up when you're on a plane or things like that, stretch your legs, the train is an excellent option for that because you're not constricted to your seat. So even if you're in coach, you can get up and walk around. You can go to the dining car if you want to have some lunch or some dinner or breakfast. Um, and you can also go to the snack car and the observation car. So there's room for you to get up and walk around so you don't have to stay seated throughout your entire journey, which is pretty great and less hassle for you guys. So I highly recommend before you go and book a trip, I know at least I like to do a lot of research beforehand and kind of get an idea of what I want to do and where I want to go. And once you kind of have an idea of those things, you could contact one of our rail specialists or your local travel agent, let them know where you want to go and kind of the rough dates and we take care of it from there. Um, we will take care of the rail, uh, your hotel, uh, sightseeing, tours, all that good stuff. So it's just a lot less hassle for you. You kind of just hand it over, we take care of it, and then we give you that information and then you go on the trip. So it makes it really easy and more relaxing, especially if you're taking the train, then you don't have to worry about driving, which is great. And city to city service. So all of our trips, um, you'll find that the hotels are kind of in the centrally located areas. So if you're in the middle of New York, uh, the hotels and uh, the as well as the Amtrak stations themselves will be relatively close together. And the hotels uh, will be in the city center. That way you're close to all the exciting things like sightseeing and tours and all that good stuff. So it makes it really convenient um, when you're trying to get around. And satisfying your hunger. 
So if you're also like me and you like to have snacks and meals with you at all times, the train is a great option for you because in the bedroom accommodations, uh, we're going to go over those as we go into the presentation, but they include uh, your meals as well. But even if you're in coach, you can also go into the dining car and eat. And like I mentioned before, um, we also have the snack car and you're welcome to bring your own food on board, which is really nice. And ultimately, flexibility. As we'll go into in this presentation, all of these trips are customizable. So even if you see on the itinerary, oh, it starts in Chicago, you don't necessarily need to start there. You could start at an Amtrak station that's closest to you. And you could flip the trip in reverse if you want to or add on extra nights. So there's lots of different ways that we can kind of set the trip up to fit your needs. But ultimately, we want it to revolve around you because you're the one going on the trip. So flexibility is one of our key things. So let's keep going. As you can see here, there's lots of really fun colored lines all over this map. Uh, and those fun colored lines actually represent the different routes that go all throughout, throughout the United States. So you can kind of see on there, um, some of them are kind of sticking out. So you see Pacific Surfliner on the West Coast in the Capitol Corridor. And then you can also see over there on the East Coast, some of those also. So, uh, and also it goes into Canada. So we do all of these places. Also, you'll notice um, it's coming from Chicago, a lot of these different routes. That's because our hub is in Chicago. So a lot of the itineraries are going to start from there. But like I've mentioned before, all of our trips are customizable. So you don't necessarily need to start there. But that's why you'll see that as we go along. All right. And like I said, you don't have to start um, at the destination that it says in the itinerary. You can choose between any of the 500 Amtrak stations that are in the United States um, to begin or end your trip. So if you decide, I want to make this round trip, if it's not already, you can do so. Um, or if there's one that's a little closer to you that you'd prefer to go out of, you can do that. And you can also arrange to fly um, into these destinations. Now, we don't take care of flying. However, we are happy to set up everything around that. So we want to make sure that this works around your schedule and your needs and all that good stuff. Like I mentioned before too, you're not constricted to your seat, so you can get up and walk around. We're gonna go into the accommodations and kind of onboard stuff later, but this is what it would look like from our observation car. Um, so you can get up and walk through here. Um, coach can do it and any class can go in there. Um, you don't need like a reservation or anything. And uh, you would get to look in the windows and look at the views. I know for me, when I was in the observation car, I took a book and I got some coffee and I sat there and you just get to see things and see the towns that you wouldn't necessarily get to pay attention to if you were driving or if you were flying, you would just be seeing clouds, right? And I don't know if anyone in here is from Southern California, but I am. And this is pretty much what my morning and my evening looks like every day. <laughs> so any excuse to get away from traffic and having to drive in that is wonderful. So if you're someone who wants an alternative to doing so as you kind of road trip around, the train is an excellent alternative. And if you don't like to fly, this is a wonderful, wonderful experience because not only do you get to get up and walk around, but you also get to look out the windows and take in the sights. Um, I had met a gentleman on the train recently who always takes the train from Nevada all the way down to St. Petersburg, Florida, simply because he doesn't like to fly and he liked that he could relax and just bring a book and look out the window and enjoy everything in between. I've mentioned before, but you can start your rail vacation from any of our 500 local Amtrak stations. So if there is one that is closer, or if you're wanting to do a different one than is listed on the itinerary, you are more than welcome to do so. Just make sure you mention that to uh, your local travel agent or to our rail specialist, and we'll make sure uh, that you are going or leaving from a destination that works best for you. 
And I've mentioned the word customize a few times, so this is just more of a brief overview of what exactly that means. Uh, so as you can see here as an example, say you decide, I want to go to the Grand Canyon, so I'm going to choose this Rails to the Grand Canyon itinerary. But while I'm there, I actually want to stay two extra nights at the El Tavar, which is one of the hotels that you can stay in. So we can go ahead and do that. If you decide, it says on the itinerary, I'm only staying here three days, but I want to stay five, we can do that. You could add an extra night. And say on the way back, you wanted to add a Los Angeles getaway and you wanted to stay there for a few days, you could totally add that on as well. Um, we really want to make sure this is a trip that fits your needs and kind of crosses all those boxes for you of everything that you want to do and want to see. And this is just another example, um, say if you were to add on two completely separate packages together. So in this example, we have the Glacier National Park Express, uh, which starts in Chicago and goes up to Glacier and into Seattle. And say you also wanted to go into Canada since you're right there. You could add on that other package to the existing one and you could go there as well. So. Like I said before, we want to make sure that we can combine itineraries for you. And if you want to start from a different location and you want to start from a station that's in your hometown, we can do that as well. And we really just want to make sure we create a vacation that is designed specifically for you. Okay, so now we're going to get into the exciting stuff. We're going to be getting into the itineraries. So this is just kind of a brief snapshot of the onboard accommodations. Like I said, we're going to be going over those a little more as we go along, uh, but this is just to kind of give you a sneak peek. So let's go ahead and get started. So we are going to be beginning here in Yellowstone National Park, which is one of my favorite national parks. If none of you have ever gone before, it's definitely it's, it's a way different experience seeing the geysers in person than it is seeing them in a picture, but they're just as beautiful. So let's get into it. So the first trip that we have here is the Grand National Parks with Yellowstone, Yosemite, and the Grand Canyon. So this is quite a trip. As you can see, you're gonna be hitting lots of different destinations. And like I mentioned before, you may be starting in Chicago here on this itinerary, uh, but you are more than welcome to start from somewhere uh, if you have a closer hometown station. But I'll briefly go through this with you just so you know what everything means. So we would be starting in Chicago. And as you can see, there's a little red arrow with a one. That means you would be on board overnight. So anytime you see that little arrow with the one or the two or whatever number, that means it's going to be an overnight journey. So you would begin in Chicago do the overnight into Salt Lake City, where you would get there in the morning. And then you'd be taking, now just so you know, for Yosemite as well as Yellowstone, there are no railroad tracks that go through those particular national parks. So you would be taking a coach, which is spacious and very comfortable, um, and you would be going from Salt Lake City to Yellowstone, where you would be staying for two days. Um, and then you would be coming back into Salt Lake you would be doing an overnight to San Francisco, and you would be there for two days. And one of those days, you would be taking that day tour out to Yosemite National Park. And then you'd be making your way down to Los Angeles, where you would be there for one day. And then you would do an overnight to Williams, where you would get to take the famous Grand Canyon Railway up into Grand Canyon, where you would stay for a day. You would come back down to Williams once again on the Grand Canyon Railway, and then you would do one last overnight on the train back to Chicago. So as you can see, we're passing through the Denver Rocky Mountains there, as well as, you know, going to Yellowstone and going to Yosemite. So you're hitting quite a few national parks along with Grand Canyon, um, as well as some city destinations in there, just to kind of give you a little bit of variety. So if we go into Yellowstone, you would be doing a sightseeing tour of the lower loop. So you would be walking around and getting to see all the different geysers, go on a couple different trails. As you can see here, I don't know if any of you are familiar with geysers, that water is very blue, but I promise it does not feel as great as it would if you were in Hawaii. That water is going to be very, very hot, 
And if you go there, you will get to smell it as well from the sulfur, um, but that water is very, very hot, even though it is very beautiful. <laughs> Then next, we would be going into Yosemite, where you would be doing a sightseeing tour of Yosemite National Park. Um, so you would be having a tour in the morning, and then you would have some free time afterwards to kind of roam around. Once you're there, it is very easy to get around. There's actually shuttles that take you to different places, and they have maps to kind of let you know uh, where the different places are within the park, because Yosemite is pretty large. Um, so it's very easy to get around, um, and then you would go back to San Francisco. Next would be the Grand Canyon. So we would be going from Williams and taking the Grand Canyon Railway up into the Grand Canyon, uh, where you would then get to do a motor coach freedom tour of the South rim. So you would be on a coach. Um, it takes you um, down different paths on that particular side where you wouldn't be able to access them yourself if you were just driving in your car. Um, and I believe those are really hard to reach if you are hiking as well. So it's kind of cool because you get to see a new perspective of the Grand Canyon and obviously take in these amazing, amazing views. Okay. So here is an overview of the trip overall. So it would be 13 days long, um, and it would include these sightseeing tours as well as round trip on the Grand Canyon Railway. Um, and it would include uh, eight nights hotel as well as four nights on board Amtrak. Um, now the starting price is starting from coach and is subject to change depending on availability and depending if uh, you were wanting to upgrade or add an extra night, um, but that would be starting from the coach price, and that would be per person. Alrighty, so we are going to go ahead and go into the next trip. So this will be Yellowstone to Yosemite by rail. So once again, starting in Chicago, if you don't remember me saying Chicago is the Amtrak hub, which is why you'll see a lot of trips starting from there, but like I've mentioned, uh, a few times here, you can start from a, a hometown Amtrak station as well. But here, we would be starting in Chicago, where we'd be there for two days, and we'd be taking the California Zephyr overnight into Salt Lake. Now, the California Zephyr, you'll probably hear me say it a few times throughout this presentation, because primarily these trips, you would be on that particular train route. It's one of the most scenic Amtrak train routes that we have. You'd be going through uh, several different national parks, state parks, um, and you would have the observation car where you have the floor to ceiling windows. Um, so it's definitely making it a very unique experience and you get to see all kinds of different landscapes and in the comfort of the train. So we would be taking the train overnight to Salt Lake where you'd be there for two days. Then you would take the coach over into Yellowstone for two days and you would come back down to Salt Lake. Then you would do an overnight into San Francisco where you would then do the trip into Yosemite. All right, so let's go into these a little more. So in Chicago, you would be doing a hop on, hop off sightseeing tour. So you might be asking, what does hop on, hop off mean? Um, so there would be, it's kind of like a shuttle or a trolley, um, and they take you to the places that would be included in your sightseeing tour, places like, for example, the Field Museum or the Art Institute or the Planetarium or whatever else is included. Um, so you can get on kind of at your discretion whenever works best for you. Um, you could get on um, at the meeting point, and you would be told all of this, obviously, when you're fixing up your reservation. You would get on, and then it would take you to whatever destination you're wanting to go to. You simply get off or hop off, as it says here. You would get off, and you could spend as much time as you wanted. Say you're at the aquarium, and you wanted to spend a few hours there. You could spend as much time as you wanted, and then you would go back to the stop where you had gotten off of the bus, it will pick you back up and it will take you back around to the next place. So it makes it convenient. If you're like me, I kind of like to take time, especially if I'm in a museum. Um, so it allows you to kind of go at your own pace. So you don't have to feel rushed. And then if you notice, the lady up in the sky over there on the left is actually me. So <laughs> I just went to Chicago recently. So uh, that's my reflection in the bean. And I actually took that picture. Uh, but if you're going to Chicago anytime soon, I highly recommend bundling up because I was very, very cold. 
All right, and then we would be going into Yellowstone National Park, where once again you would be doing a sightseeing tour of the Lower Loop. So you would be taken around through different trails where you can see all these different geysers. Um, and trust me, in Yellowstone, there's a lot of wildlife to see as well. Um, there will be bison roaming around, elk. Um, so lots of different animals to see as well, which you would probably see as you roam around also. Then you would be going into Salt Lake City, where you would be getting to do a sightseeing city tour. And there's quite a few little historical places to see there. Um, and then obviously you would get a view of the mountains, which are pretty much right there. And then you would be in Yosemite National Park, where you would be doing that Yosemite National Park day tour. Like I mentioned before, you would be doing that tour in the morning, and then you would have some free time before going back to San Francisco, which is great. So again, this is just an overview of that trip. So it would be 11 days. Um, starting in Chicago and ending in Yosemite, and it would include uh, those sightseeing tours that we mentioned, as well as eight nights hotel accommodations and two nights on board Amtrak, and one meal is included. And that price on the right, again, is starting from $22.99, and that would be from Coach, and is subject to change depending on what you decide to add in there. All righty, so let's move on. So say you didn't want to stay as many days, um, we do have park getaway experiences, not only with national parks, but with city destinations as well. So if you decided you wanted a little bit of a shorter trip, and you didn't want to commit to something so lengthy, you could definitely do uh, the getaways. Now they don't include rail. However, like I mentioned before, everything is customizable. So if you decided you wanted to do a getaway, and you wanted to add rail from your hometown, you totally could. Uh, but the getaways are usually specifically just destination focused. So it would just be, say, a New York getaway and would just focus on New York. So you could figure out if you want to do the round trip train to there and back if you wanted. All right, so now we're going to be getting into Yosemite. All right, so let's see. First, we have Rocky Mountains to Yosemite. So in this particular trip, you would be starting in Denver, where you would be there for two days. Then you would take the train cross over to Utah for two days. So imagine in between there, you're going to be getting to see the Rocky Mountains, which is going to be absolutely gorgeous, and a couple of state parks along the way also. So you'd be getting the views of those mountains, which are insane, um, as well as those forest views going through the Rocky Mountains. Uh, which would be spectacular. Um, so you would be in Salt Lake for a couple days, and then you would do an overnight into San Francisco, where then you would go to Yosemite. So again, we'd be starting in Denver, and you would be doing a sightseeing tour of the Colorado Rocky Mountains. So I do know with this particular tour that lunch is included. So at the beginning, you would be with a guide who would walk you around, again, take you to the different kind of focal points within the Rocky Mountains, kind of give you some history and things like that. And then you would have lunch, and you would have a little bit of free time to kind of roam around the area before uh, the tour concludes just to give you that information. It's always good to know when meals are included. And next, you would be in Salt Lake City, where again, you would be doing a sightseeing city tour, and you would get to see fun uh, little historical places just like this. And then you would be in Yosemite, where you would do that uh, day tour. Now, that is a picture of me in Yosemite. I was actually in Tuolumne Meadows, and you can't see much of the meadow there, but I, there was lots of wildflowers, and it was just immense. I think if you have ever been to Yosemite, you know it is huge, and there is so much to see. But if you guys have a chance to go, I highly recommend going to Tuolumne Meadows if you have a chance. It's very tranquil, lots of people picnicking, lots of trails to kind of wander down, and lots of wildlife to see as well. And this is, again, an overview of that trip. So it would be eight days total, and you would start in Denver and end in Yosemite. And it would include those sightseeing tours, um, as well as a couple, um, a few nights in hotels, as well as a night on board Amtrak, and that lunch would be included. And again, these starting prices um, are from Coach. 
And if you didn't want to commit to something that lengthy, again, this is another option for you. If you just want to do Yosemite, uh, this one is three days long and it would include two nights in a hotel and then you would get to do that sightseeing tour of Yosemite. So you would definitely have some time to kind of wander around on your own, which would be great. All right, so up next we have the Rocky Mountains to Arches and Canyonlands. So this one you would be seeing quite, quite a difference as far as the views um, starting in Denver and being surrounded by those mountains. Um, you would get to go up to Rocky Mountain National Park and do a tour. Um, then you would take the train over to Grand Junction where you would then go into a coach into Arches and Canyonlands National Park. So as you can see, it's definitely very different. So to the left, you have more foresty kind of scenery with the mountains and you would get to do a tour there also. And then kind of going into the Rocky Mountains, you have those red rocks and the red soil and kind of the rocks and all these different kinds of formations. So it's definitely a great way to kind of see the varying landscapes of the national parks because there really is so much to see. And this is an overview of that particular trip. So it would be five days and you would start in Denver and go to Grand Junction where you would then be taken to Arches and Canyonlands. And I know I've mentioned this before, um, but a lot of these trips you would be on the California Zephyr. And this one, just seeing the contrast between the Rocky Mountains and Arches and Canyonlands will be, I think, really intense and really exciting to see while you're sitting on the train, just as you go along, seeing the difference um, in the rocks and in, in everything that you're looking at. All right, so this one's a little different. As you can see, you'd be spending a little more time on the train. When you see rail experience, if you're ever looking at our trips, it just means that you would be experiencing the rail a little longer. So as you can see here, you would be spending two overnights on the train to Seattle from Chicago, where you would spend a day. And then you would take an overnight down into San Francisco, where you would be spending two days. And then you go all the way back across for two nights to Chicago. And look at all of the states that you would be going through in that time. So you can only imagine the views that you're going to see from Nevada and Utah and Wyoming across Nebraska back into Chicago. So it's definitely one if you want to be on the train and you want to take in all those sites and really experience it, this is the way to go. And all of those places are really fun, too. So first we have Seattle. So you'd be doing a sightseeing tour. Um, and one of the things that would be included is the Space Needle. And that is actually a photo of me on top of the Space Needle. Um, so I'm wondering if all of you, if you go up there, if it's also going to make your hair stand up like that. <laughs> and then next we have San Francisco, where you would be doing a hop on, hop off sightseeing tour. And again, hop on, hop off means that you would kind of just get to take it at your own pace. There'd be certain destinations you get to see in San Francisco, and you could just spend as much time as you wanted at each one and then get back on whenever you're ready to keep going. And then you would also be doing a tour of Muir Woods and Sausalito, as well as a sightseeing cruise in the San Francisco Bay. And I have to say, I've traveled internationally and I've traveled a lot of places and San Francisco still is one of my favorite cities that I've ever been to. It's just so unique and so colorful and there's really just so much to see there and lots of good food. So this is again an overview of the Northern Rail experience. This is one, remember, that if you want to be on the train and you want to go across all of those different states and see all those things, this is the trip for you. Um, so it's lots of sightseeing tours um, as well as on the train and off the train. Um, and again, the starting price is from Coach uh, and would include those three nights uh, in a hotel as well as five nights on board Amtrak. And I've mentioned uh, hotels a couple times. Um, so when you are ready to book your rail experience, whether it be with one of our rail specialists or your local travel agent, uh, you are welcome to choose a hotel based upon 
you know, how many stars that you're wanting or uh, however it fits in with your budget. Just let the person know, so let your agent know or let the real specialist know kind of what kind of experience you want in the hotel and they will give you a few options for each place. So it's nice because if you want to stay, I don't know, in a, the El Tavar in Grand Canyon, that is an option as well as Maswick Lodge. So there's a few options for each place, and that's something that you could figure out with your travel agent or with your rail specialist. All right, and this is probably one of our most popular questions. <laughs> I think everyone is always kind of like, how am I supposed to pack for this kind of a trip? So, so you're aware, you can bring two free carry-on bags with you, as well as two checked bags. So two carry-ons, as well as two checked bags, uh, that's a lot of bags. If you're bringing four, that's totally your choice, but that is a lot. <laughs> but uh, the two check bags would go um, onto the train in an area uh, where you can later grab them when you're wanting to come on or off the train, and then your two carry-on bags would obviously stay with you. Um, and the luggage can be checked 45 minutes prior to your train departure. I like to get places relatively early just so I know that I'm there and everything's taken care of. But you don't really have to rush when you're getting there, um, and you can just allot for that 45 minutes and be good to go if you have any luggage that you're kind of wanting to put in there. All right. So onboard accommodations. So now we're going to kind of get into what it would be like if you were on the train, and these are just some images of kind of the things you would see and getting on as well. So let's get into those. So first we have coach accommodations. So what's included, you may ask yourself. So reclining seats, first and foremost. As you can see, he's not reclining a lot, but that chair goes back pretty far. Um, and as you can see, there's kind of like a little leg rest under his leg. It actually goes all the way up, so you can kind of stick your legs out. I have to tell you, I took the best nap of my life when I was on the train a few weeks ago, and I was just leaned all the way back and had my legs up um, it doesn't go all the way back. I would say probably like at a 45 degree angle, uh, but it was definitely comfortable. And as you can see, the seats are a little bigger, um, which is great because then you're not kind of bumping elbows with your neighbor and you have more leg room. And then your luggage would go up above. So if you had those two carry on bags, you could put them in that overhead area. You can kind of see it there. And you would also have access to the dining car. So if you decided you wanted a meal, you could go over there and get lunch or dinner or whatever. Um, and you also have access to the sightseeing car um, and you're welcome to bring your own snacks, which is great. All right, let's get into the next one. Oh, and like I said, freedom to get up out of your seat and move around. As you can see, these folks have walked into the observation car because you see those big windows. Um, and it looks like they went over to the snack car. So it's just great. You can get up and stretch your legs and move around, socialize if that's your thing. Um, and it looks like they went to the snack car and are trying to find a place to sit down. So next we have our roomette. So if you're going to be overnight on the train and you decide you kind of want a sleeping accommodation, this is an option for you. So during the day, the seats look like this lady and this gentleman. They're sitting across from each other, but there is another seat on the opposite side of them that looks like that. So it would include that daytime seating that would then convert into those bunk beds that you see in that diagram there. So you wouldn't have to worry about doing that yourself. You will have a sleeping car attendant assigned to you who will uh, take care of the beds and give you linens and all of that good stuff so you don't have to worry about doing that yourself. It also includes climate controls, which is that little knob in the left-hand corner of the photo. Um, so you can turn the air conditioning on if you need it at nighttime, or you can turn the heater on, which is nice. Um, it also includes a small closet, that fold-down table, um, which is to her left. You can you can kind of see it. She has it folded up. Um, and then access to a restroom and shower. Um, so everyone who is in a roomette, um, in their car, there's a few roomettes in one car, those people would be sharing the restroom and the shower. I never had any problem with anyone trying to use it at the same time as me. I think everyone was kind of spread out with that. Um, so I didn't see it as a big deal, but just so you know, you would be sharing it with other people. And then it would include bed linens and all of your meals. 
So that's one thing that's really nice about the sleeping accommodations. All of your meals are included. And this is just another kind of recap for you. So the roomettes would be fitting two people, so two adults. Um, and this is kind of just a different view of the roomette. Um, and it would include those seats. Um, so like I said, there's another seat that's actually mirroring the one she's sitting in, as well as outlets for your electronics, um, so if you need to charge anything, as well as the fold-down table, um, and then all meals are included. All right. So next we have the bedroom. So probably the biggest difference with the bedroom is that you just have a little more room, um, and it also has the convertible beds, which are slightly larger. Um, it includes the climate controls, and you would have your own bathroom and sink in your room, which is really nice. So if you're going to be in there for a few days, if you're doing, say, like one of the rail experiences, this might be a good option for you. Um, and again, it includes all meals as well as assistance from a sleeping car attendant. And this is just another view of what the sleeping cars would be like. They're saying hello, having a nice little nap. And again, this is just the recap. So it would fit two adults per bedroom. There's an option for a third, which would be a child. Um, it includes all roomette amenities, um, as well as the in-room toilet, and that sofa that converts to the bed, um, as well as an armchair, room for two suitcases, um, as well as that private sink and vanity um, and shower. And all meals are included again. And speaking of meals, here we have an image of the dining car. So usually what happens when you are in a bedroom or roomette is that your sleeping car attendant will come down and you will have a time that you go and eat. That way not everyone's going at the same time. Mm -hmm. However, I was recently on the train and they just kind of let us come in whenever we were ready to eat. Uh, but depending on how busy the train is, they might give you assigned times. Um, I've al also mentioned before, even if you're in coach, you can still go into the dining car. Um, just know that the people who have the bedroom accommodations, um, that they have kind of first priority, um, and then you are welcome to also dine. It just wouldn't be included. All right. So if you're kind of wanting to check out some more destinations or kind of see what other trips we offer and maybe the destinations we talked about today, I definitely suggest using our website as a way to kind of get you inspired and give you an idea of where you want to go. So if you go to AmtrakVacations.com, you will see in the top left corner where that little arrow is, it says destinations. So you can search by individual place. You could search by a city, by a national park. Um, and look and see kind of what your options are. And then when you click on that place, the different trips that we have that go to those places will pop up. So it just gives you a little better idea of what we have in those particular destinations. You can also search by this little middle area here. So you are welcome to search by destination or you can search by train route. So if you would like to ride in the California Zephyr, which I've <laughs> mentioned several times throughout this uh, presentation, you could type in California Zephyr and all of the trips that utilize that train would show up and you could look and see. Or if you want to do the Coast Starlight, which goes on the West Coast, you could look there too. Um, so just gives you a kind of a different option as far as searching. And you can also search by station. So if you wanted to see if there was a station that's closer to you, that would be an option as well. And to help you kind of get a better idea of what to expect, I highly suggest using the trip planning area on the website. Um, here it says how to make a reservation. If you would like to order a brochure, you can do so on there. Um, there's a little more detail about on board the train also with more images um, and the baggage guidelines in case you forgot or want to know more information about that as well as the accessibility uh, details also. So all of that would be on the website under that trip planning little window there. And how to book. So if you decided after this, you're like, hey, I really want to hop on a train and go somewhere. I would suggest picking up the phone and calling us. So you would be talking to one of our uh, rail geeks, like we like to call ourselves, uh, rail specialists. 
Um, and if you let them know kind of, hey, this is where I want to go, this is what I want to see, um, this is what I want to do, they can put it all together for you. Like I said, this is very customizable. So I think this is the best way to do it because uh, you could choose what hotels you want, um, especially kind of what time you're leaving places, which I think is key. Because if you don't like mornings, you want to make sure that you don't leave really early in the morning. Um, also visiting our website, like I've just showed, um, it'll help you kind of get a better idea of what it kind of what to expect on the trip. Also, uh, if you're not really sure where you want to go, it'll maybe inspire you a little bit and kind of get your uh, brainstorming going on where it is exactly you want to visit. So the website is also an excellent tool and calling your local travel agent and letting them know, hey, I would like to travel with Amtrak Vacations. Um, this is kind of, and they can put together a trip for you or if you already have one in mind. Um, like I said, we want to make this as easy and as hassle-free as possible. So by contacting us or your local travel agent, we can get this all handled and taken care of for you and create a trip designed that fits your needs. And these are some of our everyday discounts that we have, just so you are aware. This is on our website as well. Um, but children between the age of 2 to 12 receive 50% discount on the rail portion of the Amtrak vacations trip. Um, and seniors who are 65 and over receive a 10% discount as well. And military also receive a 10% discount on the rail portion also. And like I mentioned, because you are all here and you attended and you sat through, um, you will be receiving a special upgrade voucher from me. So keep an eye on your inbox the next couple days. I will be sending it to you via email um, and you can use that uh, for any trips into next year. So keep an eye on those inboxes and I will be sending that to you for the next within the next couple days, um, just as a thank you so much for attending. We really appreciate it. I really appreciate it. All right, so once again, I mentioned it at the beginning, um, but if you wanted to go ahead and download that handout, if you go on the little right-hand side of the screen, you can download that. Um, it just gives you kind of a brief overview of some of the trips we covered, as well as a couple extras. And if you had any last-minute questions, Go ahead and put them in that chat box. I'm going to go ahead and start going over questions. So if you want to go ahead and answer, ask those, I will do my best to answer them. So I will give you a couple moments to go ahead and type in any last minute questions that you have. Oh, I see that someone took the Grand Canyon tour and really enjoyed it. I'm so happy. And you were in a roomette. So cool. I bet the views were amazing. All right. And let's see. Let's go ahead and start going through these. So some of these questions are kind of about prices. So the ones that were mentioned in these trips, like I said, uh, it's the starting from price is kind of depending on um, the availability. So the way the trips work, it's kind of like a flight. Um, you notice whenever you're going to book an airline um, that the price will go up or down depending on how many people are also booking that airline or depending on space. So that's kind of how it works with the train also. Um, and depending on if you were wanting to stay extra nights or if you were wanting to stay in a fancy schmancy hotel or not, that would also kind of move the price around. So I always suggest calling and asking one of the rail specialists about that, and they can give you the best answer as far as specific prices on things. Let's see. So some people kind of mentioned that, say they see an itinerary and they don't necessarily want to go to all of the places that are on that. That's totally fine. You don't have to stop in all of them. Like I mentioned, we want this to be customizable and completely catered to you. So if you decide, I don't want to spend a night there, I just want to keep going, you can do that. Um, we can totally arrange that for you. That's something to bring up um, as you're planning this to the local travel agent or to the rail specialist and just let them know. Um, and we can totally do that for you. That's totally fine. Let's see, what else? 
And someone else asked, too, if time could be extended. So, yep. So if you get to the Grand Canyon and you decide that you want to stay a couple extra nights, that's totally doable. Um, again, this is something you need to tell them, though, ahead of time, um, because this isn't like if you were to just buy a, a train ticket on your own. This is all done in advance. So as long as you let the rail specialist know when you're booking the trip that you want to stay extra days, um, then you can go ahead and do so. That's totally fine. Because there's a lot to see, right? You can't necessarily get it all done in the time that is on here sometimes. You want to take your time. All righty. And some people are also um, asking about assistance from the train. So we do have um, this service called um, Red Cap Service. So once you check into the train station, let them know that you need assistance on and off of the train, and they will help you take your bags and get onto the train as well. Um, so that, again, is called Red Cap Service, and that's something that you can let them know once you check into the train station um, and get your uh, train tickets. All right. Let's look through a couple more of these questions. Oh, okay. So someone was asking about walking as well as kind of getting around once you are in the national parks. So a lot of the national parks, like I mentioned Yosemite, has a shuttle, um, which makes it convenient and it'll take you from place to place. It really is up to you. And I would say too, when you are planning, um, if you're wanting to add or take away any sightseeing tours, it's really up to you about how much you're wanting to walk. Um, but you could also mention that to your travel agent or rail specialist, and they can give you a lot more detail about specifically how much walking would be done with each tour. I would say just from my experience, it really just depends on how much you want to do. A lot of our trips, as you saw, are hop on, hop off sightseeing tours. So you can kind of go at your own pace. So if you want to do more walking, you can, or you can do less depending. Okay, let's see. I'm just going to answer a couple more of these, and I think we are all good to go. All right, so I see some questions about some transfers from the train station to the hotel. So that would be something, again, to bring up as you are booking the trip. Um, like I said, a lot of the train stations are really close to wherever your hotel is going to be, probably like maybe five to ten minutes away. Um, and you can have the red caps help you if you need assistance to get out and to get a cab. And because these are all centrally located, there are going to be cabs and things like that right outside the stations. Um, but this is something that you would have to do um, on your own or ahead of time. Um, but because they're all centrally located, like I said, it's really easy to get a cab um, or even walk if you're relatively close. All right. Doo, doo, doo. I think we are all good to go, everyone. So thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. You guys had some great feedback. I hope you learned a lot from this. Um, I know I've gotten to go to some of these places, and truly, it really is a one-of-a-kind experience getting to go to the national parks, especially getting to go on the rail. It's just a completely different kind of trip than you've ever taken, I promise. So. With that, I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your Wednesday. And again, look out for your inbox because there'll be a voucher coming your way. All righty. Oh, I'm so sorry. We need to choose a winner. All right. Let's go ahead. Drum roll, please. Do, 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 do. So, Stephen. Cha, I'm so sorry if I'm saying your last name wrong. Chaput, Chaput, you are the winner of the $100 gift card. So congratulations, round of applause from everyone. Thank you so much for your feedback. So I will be sending that over to you shortly as well. And once again, everyone, look out for your inbox. You'll be having a voucher coming your way also. So have a wonderful Wednesday, everyone. Thanks so much for joining me. Goodbye.